Cameras. We all got them. But what if, dude, we could have a camera in Blender, a real one, a physical one with lenses? Woo! Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about virtual camera lenses. In particular, we're going to be talking about Leica Sumilix 50mm f1.4 lens that I use, which is a roughly $4,500 camera lens that I use the actual patents to, to recreate the lens in Blender and then render the scene through. Now this is something I never thought I'd have an opportunity to do. Number one, it sounds uh, ridiculously complex. It sounds insane. It sounds like something someone that knows a, a ton about cameras would do and not me because I only know normal people amounts of things about cameras. So I never thought this was an option. I never thought technology would be able to do this. So it's incredibly cool. It adds a whole layer of complexity and artistry to these renders and these things we build digitally that I never even considered were possible. So not only do I have the ability to design a space and a bunch of objects in that space and the material responses and the lighting and, and the movement and all of these things around the space that are, are already so complicated and so interesting and allow you to tell stories in so many different ways. But now I can also change the way fundamentally you see the scene. I want it to feel like the 60s, so I take a lens straight out of the 60s and I get some of the elements of that in my scene. And it's like, yeah, we can do those things virtually as artists. We could get close. But actually just being able to simulate it is so cool. Dude, this is like the, the actually one of the coolest things I feel like I've ever had the opportunity to do in Blender. I'm not going to get into details about how you can do this. There's an awesome video by a YouTuber called Zircon that was inspired by another video from another YouTuber who made virtual lenses. Zircon made a video explaining how you can create lenses in Blender with a step-by-step -step guide. And so I'm gonna put this video in the description. Check it out, it's awesome. It covers basically everything you'd need to know to be able to do this too. And so I'm not going to explain that in this video. Instead, I'm going to explain how I utilize this in my scenes and how I took the patents for a $4,500 camera lens and turn them into using the actual <laughs> refractive index of each of the lenses and the shape of each of the lenses, I was able to turn these into a virtual camera that you can see right here that I ended up using to render this scene with. In the scene itself, I'm gonna do a nicer render overnight that I won't see till tomorrow, but you guys will see at the end of the video. So that's gonna be really cool. So this is the scene I built the lens in. Right now I have it focused in on a focus plane that's off in the distance, but if you zoom out, we are essentially expanding the size of the sensor past the limits of the actual lens itself right now. You can kind of think of it like that way if you want. This camera is orthographic, so all of the perspective that's happening in the scene is actually driven entirely by the lenses. It's, it's not at all driven by this camera. If I go to the camera settings, you can see that it is entirely on orthographic settings. All we're doing is using this camera similarly to the way you'd use a sensor through a series of lenses that we can see if I change the shading model to transparent. Let's move some things out of the way. We have an array of lenses here housed within some lens casing. So we can turn those off and that's to stop light leaking into the camera lens and causing distortion and god rays and things like that. You could actually make the lens casing metallic like uh, some real cameras and have some interesting, you know, artifacting going on that might be appealing to you. So messing around with those materials is something you could totally do. But we have our aperture, which dictates how much light is being let into the camera. So this is like controlling your f-stop as far as I understand it. If I misspeak about camera terminology, let me know in the comments. I'm open to learning about it, but I'm also not a professional photographer. So we construct a little aperture here, which you can change the size of and the size of the opening of to dictate how much light gets let into the camera. We have these lenses, 
which I created by taking the blueprints from the patent of this nice lens and essentially used this blueprint to model the lenses myself which is explained in Zircron's video. And I was able to set the index of refraction for each of these lenses based off the actual patent themselves, the, the patent that was filed when this was created. And so the lenses are accurate to the physical ones, which is just blows my mind how cool that is. And then essentially all I'm doing is taking this camera and looking through this array of lenses. To focus this image on this plane, you take your camera, and you can move it in and out slightly. And if I move it, you'll see this is coming out of focus or in focus entirely. And that's how I focus this image. <laughs> see, it's really fun to mess around and actually bring in a, uh, a focus plane like this. So that's the camera. I essentially took this structure and I scaled it down to be the size of a real camera using a mannequin. You know, just relative scaling, not perfect. And then I saved that project. I saved the collection. We get out of there. We're in here in the project I then imported this little camera to. I put it in position where I wanted to render my scene from, my girlfriend's scene from. Thank you to my wonderful girlfriend Val who let me use her scene. This is an awesome scene that she made that has a very cool story to it. And I love the lighting and I love the feeling of nostalgia in the scene. And if I bring up just a raw render, this scene wasn't created for rendering in Blender specifically. It was set up in Marmoset. So I took the assets and the textures and set them up myself in Blender. So this is a recreation of the lighting concept from her scene that I, I recreated in Blender. And so this is like a raw, render from the scene just a straight up blender render and it's a really nice render it's it still comes off really appealing and it's very simple and it's very easy to understand i use this scene because i found it just to be very appealing and i i really like this scene a lot and i think it's really interesting and i was like well i have my own scenes i could use this camera lens on but this one immediately popped out to me as something that can super benefit from this lens especially given that it has a really shallow depth of field it's a 50 millimeter lens so it's very natural it feels like you're looking through a human perspective and i thought to myself well if we take that lens and we put it in this scene what kind of results are we going to get and because this scene is is really capturing a moment in time it's it's a, a feeling of someone letter they're writing to someone else while they're carving this little toy for a child in a train you know it's like a, a passing moment it's it's meant to capture that moment in time and this camera lens with the amount of distortion it, it creates when you pull out the sensor to be you know not cropping in enough and so you get that heavy duty distortion around the edges of the render in this hardcore depth of field that feels almost ethereal. Putting those features together and these really interesting distorted lens flares that aren't uniform because they get more and more distorted and stretched as they get towards the edges of the lenses. I put some dust in the air, which is, is a cool method how I did the dust. They're actually tiny little clouds. So if you want to learn about my dust method, we can do a video about that later. But we took all of that and putting this lens in the scene and getting it lined up, I set the focus plane right where the fox is and uh, zoomed in on that and got it focused in right on his nose. And so this is the scene and I only let it render out for an hour. So what you see here is a, a version of it with post-processing, but it creates a level of depth and narrative that is applied on top of this render that already has so much depth and narrative that it's a whole nother layer of interest and dynamicism as an artist we can use to tell our stories. And that's what makes this such a cool idea. It's way cooler than just recreating a lens in Blender. It's organic narrative device in a way. And that's something I like, I'm really excited about. I'm just, I love this idea. I'm so excited about using it. I guarantee you there'll be plenty more videos about this to come. And I also really feel like even for all of my own personal renders, there's going to be this, I'll be using this. So I'm going to be making many more different kinds of lenses and 
for many more different kinds of circumstances, and some of them with not so heavy depth of field. <laughs> and so we'll bring those in and I'll, I might even revisit some of my other projects with them. I'm currently working on a really cool Spanish carnival themed creepy scene right now. And so I'm sure this camera will come up again there. But I just wanted to show you guys this. I wanted to talk about it. I'm sure I can get into more specifics of how it was done if you're interested in how I used it and how I set up in my scenes. But for this video, I just want to talk about it. So I'm going to set this to render overnight because it takes about four times longer to render than my normal renders and we're gonna do a full render of the scene and I'll get back with that tomorrow for the outro. It's the next day for you a second for me 24 hours here it is the final render with post I rendered this to 10,000 samples for uh, it's a 1440p image and it took about five hours it's still noisy if i turn off my post processing you can see there's still noise up in here we zoom in it's there's a good amount of noise it, it could have been rendered to more samples there's some fireflies left over but with a little bit of touch up i got rid of those pretty easily so you could wait a really long time or you can blow them out get rid of them Anyway, um, yeah, I think this is awesome. Thank you again to my girlfriend Val for letting me use your awesome scene. This was super fun to do. And I, this is the start of a really cool new approach to 3D. And I can't wait to do more of it. Without further ado, I will give you back the rest of your time. Thank you for sharing it with me. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.